गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस द टेक्सुअल क्वेश्चन ऑफ दिस पोएम एंड एलिमेंट्री स्कूल क्लास फ्रॉम इंसान दिस पोएम वॉज डिस्क्राइब स्टडे एंड टूडे वी सेल सी वॉट द क्वेश्चन आर इन दिस पोएम एंड द फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज चूज द बेस्ट आंसर first question here is choose the best answer from the options given and the question is the tall girl with her head weighed down means three options are given here is ill and exhausted has her head bent with shame has untidy hair so the best answer of this question is is ill and exhausted the tall girl as as i just explained while just uh, teaching this poem that the tall girl sitting in the classroom had just her head weighed down it means that the girl is burdened with various kinds of troubles she might be diseased and that is why she is just weighing down her head so the best answer is that the girl is ill and exhausted second question is the paper singing ball with rats i mean sly and secretive thin hungry and weak unpleasant looking you can remember that in the poem while sitting in the class the different kinds of children are sitting there one as i told you one girl just sat with, with her head weighed down another another is a just paper singing ball sitting in the class Their paper seems to be a boy who is very weak and thin. He is hungry. He is deprived of the basic needs of life, and that is why he is compared to a paper, a thin paper. Means he is very weak because of not getting proper food, and that is why the best answer of this question is thin, hungry, and weak.
The big expression is the stranded, unlucky year of twisted ones means the boy has an inherited disability or the boy was short and bony. The stunted, unlucky year of twisted bones. Just as I had explained in the poem while, while just doing that, the boy is the unlucky year. Actually, he is carrying the disease that his parents have. So, his disability is due to his parents and he is carrying that disability. That is why the best answer is has an inherited disability. Socially, his eyes live in a dream, a squares game in the tree room other than this means. The boy, you can remember that an unnoted boy, sweet boy is sitting at the back of the class and he is not, his mind is just moving somewhere else. That is, that is in the squares game in the tree. Means he is not focused what is happening in the class. He is not considered, and there is nothing to be concentrated here in the class because of the situation here in the class. So his mind is just flowing somewhere else and that is why the correct answer of this question is distracted from the lesson. The boy is distracted from the lesson, is not able to catch the attention of the boy and that is why his mind is moving somewhere in the square scheme in the tree. Now the next question is, the children's faces are compared to rootless weeds. This means they are insecure or are well fed or are restless. The children's condition has been compared to the rootless weeds. As we see the rootless weeds, the grass, the dry grass in the garden or in the field, 
when the wind comes, the dry grass, they are just dry grasses are taken away from the air. Means they don't have any root, they don't have any fixed place. Similar is the condition of these children. Actually, they are means a sense of insecurity is there because they don't they don't give the the required things of life, the basic needs of life. And that is why they, they always have a sense of insecurity in their mind. So the correct answer is they are insecure. Next important question is, what do you think is the color of sour cream? Why do you think the poet has used this expression to describe the classroom walls? You can remember that the poet says about the walls of the classroom that they are sour cream. Sour, if it is cream, then the color is mostly white. But if it is sour cream, sour cream means it is alloy spell. Somewhat it takes a different color of alloyish type of color. That shows the poet is using this metaphor or this expression to describe the condition of this classroom. The walls might have been painted very just long ago and the color of the classroom, the color, the color of the walls of the classroom has become green. There are, there are several patches here and there in the classroom uh, and the just walls of the classroom. So means it does not appear to be attractive because the classrooms, the school is not maintained. One it was built by, by just given donations by some people but there is no maintenance here. So once the wall was painted, that that is going like that and the paint is just becoming just dull, it is becoming boring, patches here and there, so it is not an attractive class where the children can study well. So the, the expression is for that means the classroom does not provide a good environment for the children to have a good education, have a proper education here in the class. That is why this sour cream just describes the condition, the poor, very dull and poor condition of the class. That is why the poet has used this expression in this context.
This is another very important question. The walls of the classroom are decorated with the pictures of Shakespeare, buildings with the dooms, world map, and beautiful palace. How do these contrast with the world of the children? This really is a contrasting picture. What are their things hanging on the wall? Whether it is map or, or Shakespeare's or, or Shakespeare's head or, or the travel's valid scene. This is all very contrasting to the condition of the children here in the class. Actually, the classroom has been just decorated with the Shakespeare's head hanging there on the wall. There is a map where the where the pictures, there are various kinds of pictures of the outside world is there in the map. The pictures where just you can have the, the rich people, how they just spend their lives, means with, with big buildings, with the valleys and all that, means the outer world of the rich people, that is very attractive, that is the picture of the, of the privileged class, they are just here shown in the class, but the reality is, the reality of this class is quite different. It is quite contrasting. Because in the condition in which the children are studying here, that is very, very poor. The children who do not have the basic requirements of their life, they do not get proper food, they do not get proper dress, they are, they do not get health facility, the parents' condition is very bad, and in that condition they come to have the study in the class. What kind of a study they can get there? How can they understand about Shakespeare? Shakespeare, that is why the poet says that Shakespeare is, is wicked. Shakespeare has Shakespeare nothing to do with the children. Because the, the, the person who has no basic requirements, who does not have food to eat, who is just living in a starvation, how can he think, how can he think about Shakespeare? How can he have the, just the, the maps, the prestigious maps of the world, where the privileged class just enjoy their life? They have actually, they, they create an envy in the mind of the, of the children. They, they create a jealousy in the mind of the children. They attempt to do the kind of a stealing. And that is why, this is a bad example that is, that is being shown in the class because the condition of the children does not match with the condition that is being shown in this map or the various kinds of scenes being shown on the on the walls of the classroom. So it is it all just projects a very very contrasting picture that does not match at all. That is why that and with this contrasting picture. The poet actually, why, why does the poet present this actually contrasting picture? The poet presents such contrasting picture to highlight the issue that he wants. The poet has to highlight the condition, the very poor and deprived, the downtrodden condition, the very, very dismal and gloomy condition of the children who are living in the slums. So to highlight this actually, this issue, this problem of the children, the poet presents the another side that is of the rich people, that is that is the world of the privileged class. So one side there is the privileged class world, the rich people's world. Another side, the the world of the poor and deprived, the dark and gloomy world of, of the of the children. So through this contrast, the poet wants to focus light on the on the on the very keen issue, on the very basic issue that he actually wants to highlight for the readers, for the world, so that the world will focus attention to this basic problem of the slum children. And he wants that this condition of the children should be, should be improved anyhow. And that is why the poet is just using these two types of picture here in the class.
another question is what does the poet want for the children of the slums? How can their lives make two sins? So, actually this is what the poet wants. The poet wants to improve the condition of the children. The poet wants equality and justice for the children. The poet wants that these children should also be treated on the equal plane as the, the facilities which are being provided to the rich class children, similar kind of facilities for education, for food, for other things should be given to the children of the slum areas also. Only then actually the poet wants that these children, children should be a good citizen. Whatever happened to their parents, let, 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 let that go away. But now you will have to see the condition of these children. You will have to change the condition of the children in which they are living in order to make them good citizens for the future. So the poet wants that the children, and that is why he appeals to the governor, to the inspector, uh, to the authorities, to just focus, to just come and see the condition. You just only visit sometimes just to these places, occasionally you come here, just give some donations, give some instructions and just uh, just go with That is not the way. You will have to be very serious in for changing the condition of these children. If you want really a change, the poet wants that these two children should be lifted from this poor and a very filthy condition in which they are living. This is a dark world in which they are living. There's, there's no hope. It is a completely hopeless world. It is a completely hopeless situation. So they should be just actually the condition, their condition should be given priority by the authorities and they should be brought out of this world. They should be admitted, first they should be given the basic facilities about uh, just regarding food means they should be given nutritious food, they should be given just clothes, a, a just good place to live and then proper education that can change the future of the children and they can be like the other children of this of this country that is why the poet is highlighting this very issue in this poem an elementary classroom in islam because if you do not do this then the future is not going to be good it will actually this kind of children if if just have some this kind of envy and jealousy just when they, they see that the other people are just enjoying life, they have the facilities, they are privileged and they are underprivileged, they are not having those things, only they are shown actually those things only in the pictures, then just uh, they will be seething with anger inside and when they will grow up, they might be thieves, they might be criminals, they might just uh, just create trouble for the whole society. That is why the poet wants that the authorities should just come and just pay their attention to the condition of the children and try to bring a change in their life by providing them required facilities in life. This is what the poet wants in this very poem, an elementary classroom in Islam. That's all.